Hello everyone, I'm Kevin Nelson. Here's a look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from around the country. At least 13 people are dead, including the suspected gunman after a shooting on Monday at the Washington Navy Yard. Now religious leaders and public officials are offering prayers for the victims and their families. Washington Cardinal Donald Worrell in a statement offered his prayers for the victims, their families and friends, as well as for the emergency responders on the scene. Archbishop Timothy Brolio, who heads the Washington-based Archdiocese for the Military Services, released a statement as well, calling the shootings a terrible loss of life that shocked and saddened him, particularly as it occurred at a familiar place where he has often celebrated the Eucharist. Washington's police chief and mayor and others in law enforcement told reporters that the attack unfolded shortly before 8.30 a.m. in one of several large buildings in the Navy facility. Officers identified the dead shooter as Aaron Alexis, a 34-year-old from Texas who was a former Navy reservist working for a military subcontractor. At least three other people were injured, including two police officers. In news from the Vatican, fulfilling his duties as Bishop of Rome, Pope Francis met with diocesan clergy in the Basilica of St. John Lateran, the Cathedral of Rome, on September 16th. Catholic News Service has more on the meeting. Acting in his capacity as Bishop of Rome, Pope Francis visited his Cathedral of St. John Lateran, September 16th, to address and answer questions from diocesan clergy. The Pope devoted the first part of the two-hour meeting to answering a letter he had received a few days earlier from one of the city's parish priests who had written about his struggles in carrying out his vocation of pastor. A bella lettera. Eh, sono stato commosso. Lettera semplice. Un prete maturo. Eh, condivideva con me un suo sentimento. La fatica. The Pope urged priests to draw consolation from great figures in the Bible, including St. John the Baptist and the Virgin Mary, who overcame great tribulation through faith. Later, the Pope took questions from five of the assembled priests, addressing some of the Church's gravest problems, including the clergy's sex abuse crisis. The Church will not collapse, he assured his audience, because sanctity is stronger than scandal, and the Church is blessed with living saints today. As on other occasions, Pope Francis urged priests to be more welcoming to lay people, for example by scheduling marriage preparation classes at more convenient times. In an answer to a question about possible reforms of the process for marriage annulments, the Pope said that he would discuss the matter with his so-called Group of Eight Cardinal Advisors when they meet at the Vatican at the beginning of October. Looking now at news from around the country, a recent poll has found that 62 percent of the American public has never heard about the Common Core state standards, which sets expectations for students to master in each grade level. The state-led initiative has been adopted by 45 states and the District of Columbia and is changing the way students are taught almost nationwide. But many Catholic school parents are not thrilled about the standards and have expressed outrage that Catholic schools might be implementing them. They feel the standards may dumb down Catholic schools or require them to use materials that go against Catholic teaching. According to the National Catholic Educational Association, the NCEA, a hundred dioceses have been looking into implementing aspects of Common Core into their curriculum. The NCEA has not endorsed Common Core, but has provided workshops to help Catholic schools if they wish to implement them, since they are now part of new textbooks, teacher training and testing, and will be part of the revamped SAT. Dominican Sister John Mary Fleming, Executive Director of the U.S. Bishop's Secretariat of Catholic Education, stressed that Catholic schools are not federally mandated to implement the Common Core standards. She also noted that curriculum decisions are filtered through Catholic school superintendents. Father Peter St Stavinskis, founder of the Catholic Education Foundation, said Catholic educators should look at the Common Core with neither blanket condemnation nor blind acceptance, but with ideas on how to implement it or not based on their own high standards. More news now from the Vatican. Pope Francis met recently with the Knights of the Holy Sepulchre at the Vatican. He shared with those gathered his concerns for the Holy Land. Rum Reports has more from the Paul VI Hall. Pope Francis met with thousands of members of the Order of the Holy Sepulchre. Among other things, he told them he was worried about the Holy Land. In modo particolare, la terra di Gesù ne ha tanto bisogno. La fede 
non allontana dalle responsabilità che tutti siamo chiamati ad assumerci, ma al contrario provoca e spinge a un concreto impegno in vista di una società migliore. Most recently, the Order of the Holy Sepulchre made a pilgrimage to Rome to celebrate the Year of Faith, and Pope Francis reminded them of the three words he used in his first homily as Pope, walking, building, and professing. He also talked about just how unique this order is. It was founded back in the year 1098 by Crusader Godfrey of Bouillon. L'ordine equestre del Santo Sepolcro di Gerusalemme ha una storia quasi millenaria. Il vostro è uno dei più antichi ordini assistenziali caritativi, tuttora attivi, istituito per la custodia del Santo Sepolcro, ha goduto di una speciale attenzione da parte dei Vescovi di Roma. 3,500 knights and dames of the order filled the Vatican's Paul VI Hall, among them the order's Grand Master, Cardinal Edwin O'Brien, and also the Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, Pope XII. But they are just a small sample of the 23,000 knights and dames the order has all over the world. They all give economic support and assistance to Christians in the Holy Land and to the Latin Patriarchate of Jerusalem. In the last 10 years, it's estimated that they've all donated almost $100 million to help Christians living in the land of Jesus. And finally, in the news, the flooding in Colorado is so bad that Governor John Hickenlooper declared a state of disaster emergency across 15 counties from south of Colorado Springs to the Wyoming border. The massive flooding was caused by several days of heavy rain that began September 11th. As of Monday, September 16th, authorities confirmed that at least six people have died in the disaster and hundreds of others remain unaccounted for in the flood zone. On the federal level, President Barack Obama signed a disaster declaration and ordered federal aid for Colorado. He's also sending the head of FEMA to the state. According to several reports, over 11,000 people to date had to be evacuated. Over 17,000 homes were damaged and about 1,500 homes destroyed. The Colorado State Council of the Knights of Columbus issued a call for manpower to help get supplies to Red Cross shelters. In Colorado Springs, Catholic Charities of Central Colorado is helping victims on a case-by-case -case basis, focusing on material support for those who've sustained damage or loss. Well, that is all the information we have for you this time. I'm Kevin Nelson. Don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic News throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.